Hello, fellow HubSpotters. This is Emma with Kiwi Creative. And today we're talking about custom objects. With the enterprise tier of any hub, you get up to 10 custom objects that can house up to 1 million total records. So let's talk about what custom objects can do and what you should be thinking about before pulling the trigger. And for more detailed info to help think through your decision, download the guide linked below. Custom objects are additional unique objects you can create outside of the standard contact company deal and ticket objects. Creating a custom object is easier than ever with a wizard built right into the CRM. And for all you veterans, you don't have to build the object scheme in the developer docs anymore. No code is necessary with building a custom object. Custom object properties can trigger workflows just like standard objects, and you can report on custom objects in a similar way. As cool as custom objects are, not every organization needs ones or the price tag associated with it. The best use cases for creating custom objects are when a standard object can't sufficiently store and segment all of your data, when your business processes require specific and special associations that are difficult to establish with the existing default objects, and examples of this can include associating multiple unique software license keys to several end users, as well as resellers and distributors, tracking the number of referrals from evangelist customers and partners, and associating your clients to their end clients. Since custom objects require the enterprise tier and a hefty price increase, think through your desired application before you write that check. How will the custom object relate to your other objects? Standard and, again, up to 10 custom objects. Can you use an existing CRM object and its properties to organize your data instead of the custom object? Could there be any overlapping or inconsistent data between your custom object and standard objects? Are you hoping to use existing features that can actually only be used with the default objects? Marketing emails, for example, can only be sent to contacts. What other enterprise features are you interested in? Features vary between hubs. So consider if you like the look of other marketing features or if sales or service upgrades fit your needs better because the price is different. After you go ahead and think through that, let's do a demo. I'll show you exactly how to build a custom object, how it relates to others, and then you can think through whether it's the right fit for you. In our trusty demo portal, Let's go ahead and navigate up to settings, the cog in the top right hand corner. And in the left hand column, let's go find our standard objects underneath data management. We're gonna open that bad boy up and you'll notice towards the very bottom, we have custom objects. Now this is the wizard that's way easier than building it in the object schema. So thank goodness for this development. We'll click create custom object because we've already done the homework and thought through exactly what we wanna do. And let's utilize that license key example I mentioned earlier. So the object name in the singular sense will be license key, plural name. We'll just go ahead and add an S on the end of that bad boy. Object descriptions are not required, but certainly beneficial if you have more than one admin within your portal that may need to understand what's going on. Now the primary display property is the only one that has to be created within this wizard. This one's really important. This is the unique identifier um, of the object. So contacts have email address, companies have domain names, deals have that record ID or deal name, right? So we need to understand what exactly is it that we're storing? What do we want to manage? So in this case, it would still be license key for this example. Now the property type Depends on, I guess, your software license keys. Is it a mixture of numerical and alpha characters or is it simply a number? We'll leave it at single line text for now. Additionally, be thoughtful about whether this needs to be unique. So in our example of license keys, that would indeed be unique because every instance of the software has a unique key. So we'll go ahead and check that. You can indeed create your secondary display properties. You'll notice it's not required because you can also, after creating the object, create your properties just like you would for a standard object. So let's walk through it that way. I'll create my custom object and what do you know, we're done. So again, 
no object schema. That's an improvement. You'll notice here we've landed on license keys within our custom object still. And it looks very similar to the back end of if you looked at contacts or companies. We can customize how to create a new one. We can manage associations, right? That's really important. So let's go back and talk through how to add some additional properties. Underneath our properties, we're still under the data management section. You'll notice now the drop down contains D, 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 license key properties. So we can now build them. You'll notice some of them popped up automatically, right? You'll see it was created by HubSpot. So the standard behind the scenes, created by user ID, HubSpot team, merge record IDs, right? This demo portal also has business units. If yours don't, you're probably not going to see that. You'll see the only one created by me is the actual unique license key. So we can create additional properties right from here. So maybe our license key has uh, an expiration date. If we're talking software, that would make sense, right? I want a date picker for that bad boy. Maybe I also um, am interested in knowing um, what specific software. So software type, maybe it's for an email versus a secure email gateway, right? So maybe we want to specify this particular license key may apply to something very specific. So we'll say email, um, secure email gateway, and uh, what other uh, sub hardware? I don't know. We're making things up, right? But as you notice, this is just like building any other custom field. So now I have a couple fields that would genuinely inform this license key, right? So let's head on back to our objects. Again, we're going to scroll all the way down to our custom objects. Right now, we just have the license key hanging out there. We, of course, could add more. And so right now, let's customize the create license key form, because obviously when someone's creating a license key, we might need a little bit more information than this, right? So business unit, again, we're in the demo portal. We can add some additional properties, though, the software type and the expiration date. Just like any other object, we can make this required, right? We can save and close this. Additionally, to improve our user's experience, let's go ahead and make sure that the record is customized to display those most important and oft updated properties. So on the left-hand sidebar, let's not inundate our team with things that don't make any sense to them, like all of this. Business units we're not using. Uh, delete, delete, delete. Uh, but we do want these guys, right? So we want the actual license key, which just like any other object will be displayed in the top left-hand corner. We can just add it here too while we're at it. Expiration date and software type. And we're going to save that. So now let's go ahead and we'll visit our CRM tab in the left-hand column. You'll notice license keys exist here now under our standard objects. More custom objects, longer the list. If we now visit our license key, we can create one. License key, blah, 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 blah. there we go, that's our license key. Software type is gonna be the email, that's our SaaS offering. Expiration date is gonna be a year from now. And no business unit, right? Create license key. Now you'll notice one thing that was missing from that create form is our associations. You can see that also here in the right-hand side. This goes back to what we were just talking about regarding associations. And anyone that's ever had a meeting with me, you know, this is a bee in my bonnet. How is our data connected? We see that this custom object, anatomy of this record is laid out just like any other object. Left-hand column, most pertinent and often updated information. We, of course, can still view all of our properties. They didn't go anywhere. Our middle column, as always, is our activities. Right-hand column, associations. Nothing's there. So let's back up and let's talk about that. Let's visit our settings cog again. We're still going to be under data management. We're scrolling to the bottom of the objects drop down and picking custom objects. We got our setup. We got our record customization. Let's visit the associations tab. So right now, license key is a meteor in our solar system. It's not connected to anything. The gravitational pull is not keeping it within the, the orbit, okay? Let's make sure it does. We'll create a new association. Now let's think, right? Because thinking is the hardest part of HubSpot. Otherwise, the buttons do what we tell it to do. So how do we want this license key associated? 
So a company can certainly purchase a license key. Okay. So we can have a key associated to many companies. That makes sense if we have end users and resellers or distributors. Excellent. You'll notice there, license keys to companies. Let's go ahead and also make this applicable to contacts. We want the human being associated, right? And look, we're just pushing a couple buttons. So we have keys to companies, keys to contacts. Love the alliteration. The only other thing perhaps, actually both of them, why not? We have deals. Are we selling these SaaS offerings and we need to indicate maybe a trial key within the deal that's going to get converted? And of course, what do we? What does Emma love? Service Hub. Tickets. If someone calls in with a tech support or customer service concern regarding the key, we want that included on the ticket, obviously, right? So now we have our associations. Ha-cha-cha. If we head on back to our CRM and check out our license keys, we're going to go to our single example that I could never duplicate again because I just hit a keyboard like a cat walking across it. Look at our right-hand column now. Now we are associated correctly. Now we can indicate a specific human is associated. Maybe we can just grab one of our lovely test examples, right? We can indicate via association label this particular human, right? So we can say maybe Jennifer's the uh, in a buying role versus Caitlin is decision maker. You absolutely have that ability. We'll save this for now. We now have the three humans connected to this key. Maybe uh, Linda is the reseller, right? We need to make sure, well, we sold the key to Linda, but we found out via tickets that Caitlin and Jennifer are the users. Look at us connecting the dots. We can connect our companies. Again, this can be multiple companies. And of course, we can connect our deals and tickets. So this starts becoming extremely valuable, right? We can create a brand new one directly from this key if it's a renewal, for example, or we can add existing. Now that we got our key, our properties, our associations, what's like the paramount topic? Reporting, of course, we can absolutely pull reports. But remember, what are reports based on? Data points. So if you've forgotten to add a custom field or neglected to consider it, your report may not be as cool as we hope. If we create a report now, just like our other objects, our license key will show up under the single object portion. So we can look at license keys as a single object report. So we could obviously update our filters, object create date. Uh, I imagine considering we have one test, we're going to want to look at expiration date. So within our visualization, we can look at expiration date and the count of keys. How many keys are expiring um, within a certain amount of time, right? So we know that none of my one are expiring in 24, but we have one expiring 2025, just like we would report on a regular object. And just like a regular object, we can also create custom reports. And as we know, custom reports smoosh together various objects, right? So if we were interested in understanding license keys and the contacts it's associated with, right? Where we say maybe contact type is a field we're capturing to indicate reseller versus end user. And we want to see that relationship to the license key. We could absolutely do that. As you can see, creating and using a custom object is now easier than ever. But what can heavily influence your success or lack thereof is the appropriate planning. Remember to consider what you hope to accomplish with the custom object and how you envision it associating with the standard objects. Download the guide linked below for additional guidance when considering custom objects. And if you enjoyed this video, check out our other HubSpot helper videos and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Need custom recommendations for your HubSpot portal? Check out our HubSpot action plan today.